the god of lightning and thunder, the goddess of love and magic, the god of war and death. Sure, all these gods are important, I guess, but what about the god of throwing things? Where's his chance to shine? I bet he can beat all those other gods in a fight. In fact, that's just what he'll do in this God of War Ragnarok ranged attacks only challenge. Sure, he can block to defend himself, but the only way Kratos, the god of chucking things right into your face, and his son, Atreus, the god of shooting you, yes, specifically you, are able to deal damage must be through ranged attacks. No other form of damage dealing is allowed. That's for lesser gods like Thor. All on give me God of War difficulty, of course. I very much appreciate the suggestion for this challenge. To clarify, I will not count any moment where it's basically an interactable cutscene, such as forced finishing bosses, as there's no way to progress otherwise without speedrunning tactics, which I don't engage in. Not since the war. Any moment I can avoid melee though, I must do all I can to do so. Much to cover, so let's practice safe distancing and make sure no one gets too close with their icky cooties as the god of ranged attacks. Right away, the crying begins. First, because I have my head bashed in by an angry goddess with a grudge who I'm reluctant to defend myself against. Not because I feel bad for killing her son in the last game, but because I don't want to get my hands dirty. Much better to scar my own son with my traumatizing death. The second reason I'm crying is because the game starts off with Atreus' beloved wolf, Fenrir, dying in his arms. I wasn't prepared to feel. Let's go back to where my skull was being crushed. That was much more fun than this. When some humans with a death wish break into our territory, this marks the first true fighting, and I'm happy to share my axe with everyone. I am also glad to see it often freezes regular enemies on impact, making it a lot easier to juggle switching between targets. None of the humans give me much trouble, so of course nature decides to keep things interesting by slamming into me with a 700 pound raging bear. Letting him chew on me for a bit might have been a bad idea when I'm swiped down right as the fight breaks out. As the first boss of the game, he's not unbearable, and it's pretty simple to avoid most of his swipes. It does help when I rage out and start chucking boulders at him as well. Even as the first boss though, he has a very hardy hide, and he doesn't pause until I get his health very low. Unfortunately, while trying to avoid using the finisher animation, it turns out that will buy him just enough time to heal and counterattack, bringing a quick end to Kratos. Wiped out the gods of Olympus and yet brought low by a bear. Exactly how my uncle died. Bear hugging the bear causes it to transform and reveal itself as a very confused Atreus. Turns out he turns into out of control animals when he gets too emotional, which is very cool. But it would be much nicer if he turned into a gecko or something much easier to beat next time. My beauty sleep is interrupted by none other than Thor the Thunder God and Odin, the god of being a narcissistic self-absorbed scumbag. Yep, two equally essential roles to keep in the universe balanced. They're upset that I killed their relatives, but Odin is willing to get over it if I promise to stop killing more of them. That sounds like a lot of pressure, and I'm unwilling to comply, so Thor decides to try and impress me by showing me how great he is at throwing things, which means chucking me right up into the upper atmosphere. Nothing like going from fighting humans and my bear son to fighting one of the most powerful Norse gods. Unfortunately, I left my axe back at home when I got caught up in the excitement of going through the roof. This means already I must resort to a fist fight as I don't have enough boulders to squash Thor with. It doesn't take long at all for Kratos to remember his axe is always happy to return to Cinder, which means I'm back in action almost right away. Which doesn't stop Thor at all from showing off his throwing skills even further when he uses me as a frisbee. Still better than the hammer to the face, but that does come shortly after. Despite not being against the rules to block, for about 90% of the game I refuse to do so, because I'm an idiot who likes to make things harder on myself for no reason. These deaths are the result. Once I do start blocking, Thor becomes much more manageable. Helps that he doesn't seem to be interested in getting out of the way of my throws, which is very intimidating to watch him tank through, but also quite helpful. The fight ends when Kratos cheats by punching Thor, ruining their contest of chucking things at each other, 
but I personally think Thor cheated first when he tried hitting me with huge bolts of lightning. Thor bails, and Atreus and I think it might be a good idea to go visit our dwarf friends, Brock and Sindri, which means digging through constant harassment from humans, undead, and an angry centaur lady. When Kratos starts the fight with a couple punches, a simple checkpoint reset will take that damage away, clearing away any shame of his actions. From there, it's plenty easy to avoid the Huntress's attacks and bounce my axe off her head until she's dazed, confused, and more importantly, dead. Then some rest and relaxation with family before heading to a new land in search of Tyr, the god of war who has been imprisoned by Odin for being too good. Did I mention that Odin sucks? Along the way, we have to clear out hives of wretches in the Grim. For the little ferrety creatures, I spend more time throwing my axe into the dirt than doing anything useful, but they're easy to avoid, so it balances out. As for everyone else, my main tactic throughout the game is to stay on the move and endlessly chuck my axe at one enemy at a time in order to interrupt them from upgrading in power. This works a lot better if they'd back off a little and let me do it. But no, they have to be rude and constantly attack me from all sides, making the wear and tear tactic I'm trying to do a lot harder to pull off. These are just hindrances though, nothing major. No, the major problem is while in the dwarf village, I come across Odin. He's just standing there, menacingly. Somehow, he's immune to all my attacks, so nothing to do but flee before he smites us. Seeking improvement after that embarrassment, I do what I can to upgrade my skill tree. And while there's not much to gain, a little can still go a long way like my axe does every time I throw it. It all connects, like my axe does to my enemies' faces. I think you get the idea. Now improved, I go exploring and spend 10 minutes chucking my axe into the Hateful, a flaming Draugr whose favorite activities consist of getting into arguments online and trying to bury her blades in me. She's not too difficult if I focus on killing her backup first, then it's just a matter of dodging her repetitive but rapid attacks only for her to attack me again and again throughout the game. But it's nice to see an old friend along my travels, even if her only goal is to kill me. I'm then off to die for a bit in this enclosed space because a hulking mother is constantly popping out babies to kill me left and right. It's nice to see murder is so ingrained in them that they're ready to do it the moment they're born. Usually, you have to teach that, and it takes forever for some people to get it. I'm just glad most enemies are so focused on killing that they only bother to cycle through two or three attacks, making it much simpler to learn and best them. Sometimes though, two or three attacks is more than enough when I struggle to stay ahead of so many different attackers who employ a nice mix of ranged and melee. It takes me more time to beat this one group of optional enemies than it did to beat the hateful or my sun bear, and certainly a good deal more deaths. All the pain is well worth it though if it means helping a distressed animal. Only problem is, sometimes there are animals whose only stress is trying to kill us, like this lightning lizard. Because yes, the giant tail, teeth, and claws weren't enough. Of course it should shoot lightning as well. Just my luck. I'm very disappointed that I spend more time fighting this lightning lizard than I did with a literal god of lightning. He's not even a hard fight with his really predictable moves that have plenty of wind up. No, I am just an idiot. Least every attempt I do a little better. That is until I get him on the edge of death, fail to finish the job, and then do way worse for the next couple attempts. Gotta mix it up I guess. Eventually, I do have enough patience and caution to avoid the Drakki's attacks and keep from being its prey. Taking a break with Atreus, we go on a bonding log ride, like in Splash Mountain, before breaking down a door to discover an imprisoned war god, also like my last visit to Splash Mountain. Tyr is a pacifist now, which I've always been a big fan of, so great for him. I'm so into pacifism, in fact, that I ensure all of Odin's guards practice it. If they're dead, that makes them non-violent. So that's pacifism in a way, right? Returning home with our newly freed friend, Atreus is disappointed that Tyr won't lead their forces to victory over Odin, so he takes off on his own to seek help from Freya, 
the maniac mother who attacked us in the woods at the start of the game. Much to my surprise, that means I'm now playing as Atreus, which actually really works for me since he's both highly mobile, but also wields a bow, the king of ranged weapons. Well, at least the most iconic ranged weapon. A giant axe that you chuck at people and flies back when beckoned is pretty deadly in its own right, after all. It's slow going with how hardy every enemy is, but after a good half hour of travel and combat, I make it to Freya. Good news! She doesn't kill me. Bad news! She is still trying to kill Kratos in the name of vengeance for her son and won't help us. Baby steps, right? Nothing to do but take Tyr and travel to the land of the elves. The Dark Elves and the Light Elves are still in the middle of their centuries-long war, but don't worry, they're more than happy to direct some of those hostilities towards us. It's okay though, because this place has my favorite part of this challenge. The Elves keep reflecting crystals all over the place, and if I bounce my axe off of them, they'll tear right through any nearby enemies. I go out of my way to ensure every enemy is lured to a crystal so I can just keep doing it. This is both fun to do and deals more damage than I normally deal, so it's a complete win. Not for the elves, maybe, but they're a little busy getting cut up to complain. I admit, I did get mesmerized for about five minutes just watching the axe fly all over the room, bouncing between the crystals. I'm easily entertained, it seems, and I'm okay with this. What I'm not okay with is Alva. Alva? Alva. Who knows? Leader of the Light Elves. When she intercepts us, everything goes to hell. No boss causes me more deaths and more time loss than this spamming pain. It's mainly because I refuse to give her the satisfaction of interrupting her attack with a parry attack, as that's not a ranged attack. Unfortunately, if I don't interrupt her, she'll just keep spamming that one attack, which covers half the arena, taking half of my health with her every single strike. It's non-stop and will only end with my demise. So what can I do? I try to rage through the hits, but Kratos' yoga time has really cut down on how long he can hold that rage, despite my own rage at my predicament. If I perform hit and runs, I can sometimes make it out of range of her attack before it lands, but more times than not, I'm dead. If I only run and don't fight back, Somehow, my chances go even further down. There's no staying ahead of her attack long enough to do anything, and so that leaves me stuck with having to parry her after all. I've never been so disappointed to defend myself. Not since I stopped the Kool-Aid man from breaking into my house, causing him to shatter, but that's a story for another time. Parrying her first strike causes her to switch into a variety of attacks, which is great, but won't fully stop her from using that AoE attack every now and then. I refuse to parry her a second time, so that means I get to experience plenty of more deaths at her hands. I strive to keep my distance at all costs, but sometimes there's nothing I can do but go into the light at the end of the tunnel. Get lucky and whack her for a while though, and you'll have her healing up in a way that I can't seem to stop, costing me even further attempts. Oh, how wonderful. Turns out a second parry is vital once again to interrupt her healing, so I can finally finish her off. This boss has heavily damaged both my challenge and my body, so I'm glad to see the end of her even at such a cost. Wiping out the Light Elves means the Dark Elves can attack in force, which unfortunately means I'm caught in between. The Dark Elves are a bit more dangerous than their counterparts, but not enough when I have so many fun reflections to play with. It means I get to save another giant animal along the way while I'm exploring, and that's what the best slaughters are all about. Am I right? That and loot! Like this armor I'll hold onto for most of the game that slows down time for a second if I dodge at the very last moment, making combat much more doable. Such a busy day of death. I need a good rest after all that. But instead, I'll have that old dream where a bunch of mini-me's make me feel guilty for my past deeds. The Kool-Aid man shouldn't have startled me! I didn't mean for the cannon to go off! I mean, Atreus. Yes, Atreus is sucked into the Dreamverse and deposited into the land of the giants. I think. I'm not 100% sure. 
Unless this is that one dream I always get about making a new friend and then beating up her grandma and destroying her pottery. At least, it's all to save another animal. So it's one I'm happy to dream of, but it sure is a weird one. Returning to the world, Atreus runs right into Daddy Dearest, who isn't so pleased with him vanishing. There's no time for a fight, though. Between them. Because the undead would like a word. Slaughtering them for interrupting our bickering, we're again interrupted by Hawkwoman stomping my face in. She wastes no time in tearing through my health with her rapid, relentless attacks. I now have the ability to enjoy the scenery, though, as I can use a runic attack to multi-attack her with my axe with a single fling. It doesn't hit super hard, but it does always interrupt my enemies and quickly becomes one of my favorite go-to moves. Hawkwoman may be fast and has a thing for ranged attacks, which I appreciate, but what she lacks is armor that slows down time. Once I realize I can rely on that to gain distance on her, whenever she attacks, it's not a problem to stay ahead. Add on to that, I now know how to spend my rage in order to heal, and my odds of survival? Well, they don't skyrocket. No, I'm much too dumb for that. But they do pop up a little, at least. Hawkwoman reveals herself to be Freya, which is great, because I thought I had managed to find yet another person who wanted me dead. But no, just the same person who already wanted me dead. I thought I recognized that face smashing. She's willing to call a truce with Kratos. Honestly, I think for the sake of Atreus, but also because she can use his throwing arm to deal with the curse that Odin put on her, which keeps her trapped in Midgard. We're off to Freya's old home, which means getting chopped on by hungry animals and spat upon by angry poisonous plants. A standard camping trip with the family. I'm really learning to love slowing down time. I'm not even 100% sure how much it's helping in combat, but either way, it is always fun to trigger. Just so I can run right into a giant tree that shoots lasers out of its chest while the undead swarm me. Why does anybody live here? I'm very disappointed to die to the tree with only a sliver of its health left, but when it pops out bombs for me to throw back at it, I'm more than happy to accommodate it. It's so much easier to kill Odin's warriors, as they're all very easy to freeze and tear down one by one only to immediately run right into deadly gas. I bet Odin is so confused on how his biggest problem went away just like that to something he didn't even orchestrate. No enemy matches my own genius. Especially confusing since I don't fall at all to one of his own captains, Fisk, one of the easiest bosses in the entire game. Perhaps it's all my experience fighting Fisk, the Kingpin, and Spider-Man, or perhaps it's my constant use of time slowing but Fisk here can't catch me, which makes it really simple to win. That will have to be a nice memory to hold on to, because immediately after I have to face a giant lizard mama who uses portals in magic. Because once again, the giant teeth and claws aren't enough it seems. I'm hopeless at pronouncing her name, so let's just stick with big lizard mama, shall we? Things go wrong immediately, as I discover that keeping the distance is the opposite of what you want to do, as she punishes it heavily. I may not like being super close to all those teeth, but it's safer than the arcane. Mama Lizard also uses a very damaging attack that must be parried if I'd like to avoid a dirt nap. The good news is, I'm totally okay parrying it, challenge-wise, since my new shield parry lets off a short-ranged blast but it is still ranged. It's also short, like I said, which means I'm often too far away to use it and die anyway. That and her having so much health means plenty of deaths as I struggle to stay ahead for long. Once I prioritize dodging over hitting though, I am able to beat the giant magic worm. With Mama Lizard's tragic death, we free Freya from her magical bindings and make amends. She'll also stop trying to kill me. Wild Boy takes a pleasant vacation to Asgard in order to spy on Odin in an attempt to save Kratos from death via prophecy. Kratos himself beats prophecy to it by dying in a multitude of ways as I explore Midgard. We're searching for the Norns, three beings who love to partake in prophecy. My first major roadblock is this Traveler, armored warriors who take absolutely zero damage 
from anything I can do to them. Well, nearly anything. I have a single move where if I evade away and throw my axe at the same time, that will penetrate the Traveler's defense. Not by much, and I have to be rather close to the hulking man with the massive sword, but on the bright side, they're never in much of a rush to kill me, so patience wins out. Only to get ambushed by a magical abomination of frost, but honestly, the bulked dude was far more dangerous than magic ice. Finding the Norns, they prove themselves to be very dramatic theater majors, and while I do appreciate the pageantry of it all, I appreciate even more the heads up that Heimdall, the winner of the Nine Realms Biggest Jerk Award 200 years in a row, will kill Atreus if I don't kill Jaime first. Problem is, Heimdall is so perceptive that no one can land a hit on him. If only he used that talent to have a slightly tolerable personality. But being horrendous will make it all the easier to kill him, I suppose. If I can ever get to him. While searching for the means to build said weapon, I am attacked by cannonballing Grimm who tear apart my health and are highly resistant to damage, meaning it's quite the painful slog. Even once I've acquired my new weapon, a spear that endlessly replenishes itself, I'm still waylaid by more minions than I can handle. But now I have an exploding infinite spear, which means however slow this may go, it's still gonna be fun to use. Still not more vital than my frost axe, but great to have. I do get a nice rest when I come up against two optional bosses, a ghostly barbarian and then another crazed Grim back to back. Both kill me seven times each, but neither take too long to fight and the warrior is especially fun to fight and dodge. As for the Grim, I get to chuck grenades at him and what's not fun about that? Back to Asgard for more spy work as Atreus hunts for a magic mask of knowledge. Odin wants it for limitless knowledge, but I'm more interested in potential cartoon antics if the movie The Mask with Jim Carrey is anything to go by. Unfortunately, while searching for it, we may or may not have freed angry murder doggo Garm, and he goes wild, flying portals throughout the land of the dead. Which, yes, means the dead are now swarming other realms, such as our home. The game teaches me a new form of rage, which is decidingly not a ranged attack. But no worries. Restarting, I still have to use the move, but I can let my rage out in a harmless corner, like therapy has taught me. Atreus and Kratos have been struggling to communicate. So like any good relationship, what's a better fix than diving into hell and slaying waves of undead together? It does mean brutes in a small area parrying my attacks and killing me on repeat, which is pretty terrible and then fighting another traveler, which takes quite a bit. But even worse than all of that is having to fight a giant dog. I wish I didn't have to do this, and not just because Garm kills me 25 times thanks to his huge health bar, but also, obviously, because he's a dog. I'm very slow to learn Clifford's moveset in my terrible attempts to avoid becoming Puppy Chow. It takes forever to deal any worthwhile damage and even my mighty throwing arm is a bit sore by now, but not quite as sore as the rest of my body since this battle of attrition never ends well for me. Only good thing about doing minimum damage is that this means I have plenty of time to learn his moves. After battling Garm for nearly an hour, I finally put him to sleep, only for him to want to play Chase instead, which is unfortunate since I'm the ball in his eyes. Thankfully, targeting his chains does do massive damage to him, which I really wish Kratos had realized the first time I fought him. But this second fight is much faster and much easier. Even better, winning means we can implant Fenrir's soul into Garm's body, leading to the best timeline, where Fenrir is back to life as a massive puppy. I'm not ashamed to cry in joy here, and not just because that long fight is finally over. What's worse than a boss fight with a huge health bar? A mini boss with a huge health bar. I don't know why this random centaur lady has so much health, especially when no other enemy I come across in this area does, but I guess with every other foe, I don't feel quite as much relief when they die as I do when she does. 
Not even getting attacked by two lightning lizards causes me as much bother with how easily they fall. Following that up with a raging werewolf is slightly harder, but I'm still much happier to die to a proper boss than a mini boss with big dreams. I'm exceptionally happy to come across Heimdall here as well. His mount never lands a blow with my ranged attacks being a perfect counter to it. And of course, instead of properly mourning his lost beast, Heimdall kicks its corpse to really ensure that he is the most hateable character possible. I admit, I might enjoy this next part too much, but overwhelming Heimdall's senses with my exploding spears is just too much fun. I'm disappointed that Heimdall kills me six times thanks to his two health bars, but I'm just glad that overall, he's pretty easy to dodge. Painful when I'm not fast enough, sure, but the guy who can predict everyone else is highly predictable himself. They succeeded in making Heimdall so hateable that I don't think I've enjoyed beating a boss this much, not because of a sense of accomplishment, but simply out of hate for the character. He didn't even do anything of particular note, like kill a friend or something. The guy is just that unlikable, and that takes special talent. Now that we've killed Odin's top watchdog, time to pretend that we didn't, and let Atreus go back to spying. Only problem is that in order to do what Odin asks, I have to get Thor's help. Why well, always love a good bar fight. I knew there'd be a problem when I had to check my weapons at the door. I may be weaponless, but I have a flying sentient sword with me. It's very handy. I can't order her to attack, and I can't deal damage myself, but I can dodge for the next 22 minutes while my friendly blade slowly takes out all these brawlers for me. In comparison to that, the magic snow that tries to murder us shortly after isn't much of a problem. With Loki's mask fully built, it's time to flee back home. Instead of taking the fight to Odin though, I decide to go for a detour and explore, which involves getting burnt to a crisp by a dragon while trying to kill a magic fire monster. Either that, or getting crushed by a couple travelers who I stumble across. None of these bosses kill me that much, and when I finally do track down that dragon, I'm more than happy to kill him on the very first try despite starting the fight off quite poorly. Lots of healing, and an incredibly rare moment where I just managed to lock in means sometimes I can actually be somewhat competent. It surprises me more than anyone, I swear. I should know better than to feel joy though, as in any story, that's the precursor to the fall. If only I had never returned home. Massive spoiler warning to you if you're watching this and still haven't played the game. Bringing Odin's most sought after treasure to our home should have made us more cautious, and it does for Brock as he realizes Tyr isn't what he seems when Tyr tries to take the mask. Tyr reveals himself to have been a disguised Odin all along, fatally stabbing our friend and vanishing, but not without his beloved mask. Well, nothing to do but raise Asgard to the ground now as revenge, don't you think? In order to do that, we're gonna need bigger friends. Surtur, the Fire Lord, should do. In order to get his help, I'm going to have to battle both another Fire Magic Abomination and then two Soul Eaters, which, despite the freaky name, aren't much trouble. It's always the swarms of minions helping bosses out that are the real trouble. Surtur is willing to help us, but while he bathes in cosmic goo, we're going to have to do battle with two Valkyries at the same time. I may be the god of throwing things, but this would be too much for me if Atreus didn't keep their attention divided. Even then, I'm pretty skilled at getting myself killed by their rapid attacks. They may hit hard and fast, but there is never a moment I wasn't enjoying this fight, and that has to be commended. Kratos may be hating it, which is fair, especially given they have three health bars, but now that I'm actually bothering to block, I find myself dying way less. Who could have guessed blocking would stop a person from taking damage? It's a wild concept. It takes a little to learn their moves, but since neither are in a rush to kill me, it's definitely doable. Atreus and Kratos even do iconic poses for the camera. That's how grand of a fight this is. Putting on the strongest armor I have available, I lead the charge into Asgard with the friends we made along the way. 
the most unstoppable power of all. Unfortunately, when it comes to just me, I'm very stoppable. This is the worst moment in the entire game for me. No boss, not before or after this moment, is as atrocious as fighting this commander, ogre, and huge stream of soldiers all at once. Mainly, the commander. This guy takes basically no damage, but deals out tons of it without pause. If I can kill him, which rarely happens, I then have to ensure I don't die to his troops, which also doesn't work out, restarting the fight. I spend over an hour here, so close to the end, yet so far. But in the end, I do get lucky, with the commander taking his sweet time to reach me, meaning I can turn him into an exploding porcupine with my spears, and finally find freedom. Only for Atreus to turn into a bear and refuse to change back. Kids today. Bears do not shoot bows, much to my sorrow, so there's nothing I can do as him. Right side though, Atreus is immortal as a bear and Sindri is on the warpath in vengeance for his brother, which means I just have to enjoy the sights while he does all the work. Once that's done, it's down to Kratos and Thor in the rematch we've been waiting for between the two gods best at throwing. Thor has a mean throw, and he does not relent. While I don't relent either, but I'm more of a quantity over quality with my throws. I do not hit hard, but I do hit fast, and despite all of Thor's theatrics, most of his moves are really easy to avoid. Probably because of the theatrics is why they're easy to avoid in fact, since I can see them coming with time to spare. The one move I do struggle with is a hammer throw that lets out an arc of lightning, but it's not much trouble to learn to avoid. I just love to roll to the side even when I shouldn't. Thor also loves to release lightning across the arena, which I should parry, and could if I was closer, but I think I'll settle for using my rage to survive the lethal attacks. Maybe not the best solution, but I'm still alive, so whatever works. It's a hectic fight of endless dodging and throwing, but in the end I prove myself as the superior god of throwing. For the sake of our kids, and perhaps I'm just putting it out there, in awe of my throwing skills, Thor is ready to stand down, but Odin won't have that. He kills his own son. Did I mention how sucky Odin is by chance? and then he tries to do the same to us. After fighting Thor though, I'm still locked in and eager to bring down the king of the Aesir. I only die once when I fail to get off an exploding platform in time, but otherwise Odin is a pushover and I find it simple to avoid all of his attacks. Helps that he makes everything glow before he is going to attack, it really takes the guesswork out of it. Doesn't help that he has a second health bar, and isn't willing to lose so easily as the final boss of the game. He's a tad bit peeved that Loki destroyed the mask, costing him his life work. Well, I got good news for him. His life will be over soon, so he won't have to fret about it for long. Problem is, halfway through his second health bar is where things get tricky. I find it quite difficult to stay out of the pools of frost, fire, and poison he covers the room with, and even worse, Odin will shield himself with three different shields, each of which must be destroyed with a different weapon. The fire and runic shields aren't any trouble as my axe and spear make light work of them, but the frost shield requires the use of my fiery blades of chaos. I only have two range attacks with them, neither of which are very effective, and Odin will keep attacking, often burning me to a crisp. In the end though, when I think to avoid the burning flames, I can very slowly whittle away his frost shield, and while I don't deserve to still be alive, 1% health remaining is still health remaining, which is enough for me to finish off Odin and bring an end to Ragnarok. Huzzah! After 40 hours, 36 minutes, and 432 deaths, I've beaten God of War Ragnarok with only ranged attacks, with the exceptions of fist fighting Thor at the start and double parrying Alva. Thank you very much for watching. I truly hope you all enjoyed. I'm off now to play catch with my paw and hope he doesn't use the axe again as the thing I need to catch.
I can only reattach my arm so many times. Good luck and Godspeed, my friends.